Hello everyone and welcome to Know Your Drug. The ultimate destination for all things of health and wellness from the fascinating world of pharmaceutical. We are here to guide you on cetuximab intravenous, exploring the various aspects of cetuximab, their usage, dosage, mechanism of action, side effects, and most importantly, essential advice for taking them safely and responsibly. Before we begin, let me emphasize that the content provided in this channel is purely educational. Always consult a healthcare professional for personalized advice regarding medications. Now, let's get started. Use of Cetuximab Intravenous Cetuximab is a monoclonal antibody used intravenously for the treatment of certain types of cancer. It specifically targets the epidermal growth factor receptor, EGFR, which is often overexpressed in certain cancer cells. Cetuximab is approved for the treatment of colorectal cancer. It is used in combination with chemotherapy for metastatic colorectal cancer that has EGFR positive tumors. In treatment of head and neck cancer, cetuximab is used in combination with radiation therapy or chemotherapy for locally advanced head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Dosage of cetuximab intravenous. The dosage of cetuximab intravenous administration can vary depending on the type of cancer being treated and whether it is used as a single agent or in combination with other treatments. Additionally, individual patient factors such as weight, overall health, and the extent of the disease can also influence the specific dosing. For colorectal cancer, when used as a single agent, the typical initial dose is 400 mg per square meter as in 4 infusion, followed by weekly doses of 250 mg per square meter until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. When used in combination with chemotherapy, the initial dose is also 400 mg per square meter as in 4 infusion, followed by 250 mg per square meter weekly, given at the same time as the chemotherapy treatment. For head and neck cancer, when used in combination with radiation therapy, the first dose is usually 400 mg per square meter as in 4 infusion, followed by weekly doses of 250 mg per square meter until the end of radiation therapy. When used in combination with platinum-based chemotherapy, the initial dose is 400 mg per square meter as in 4 infusion, followed by 250 mg per square meter weekly, given at the same time as the chemotherapy treatment. It's important to note that dosing and treatment schedules may be adjusted based on a patient's response to the medication and their tolerance to side effects. The treatment should always be administered by a qualified healthcare professional in a clinical setting. As always, I must emphasize the significance of consulting with a healthcare provider or oncologist for accurate and up-to-date information on the dosage and administration of cetuximab or any other medical treatment. Dosage recommendations may have changed or new research findings might be available in future. Mechanism of Action of Cetuximab Intravena Cetuximab is a monoclonal antibody that exerts its therapeutic effect through a specific mechanism of action when administered intravenously. Its primary target is the epidermal growth factor receptor, EGFR, a protein that is overexpressed or amplified in certain types of cancer cells. The mechanism of action of cetuximab involves the following steps. EGFR binding, cetuximab binds specifically to the extracellular domain of EGFR on the surface of cancer cells. This binding prevents the activation of EGFR by its natural ligands, such as epidermal growth factor, EGF, transforming growth factor alpha, and others. Inhibition of signal transduction, when EGFR is activated by its ligands, it triggers a series of intracellular signaling pathways that promote cell growth, proliferation, and survival. By binding to EGFR, cetuximab inhibits these signal transduction pathways, reducing the cancer cell's ability to grow and divide uncontrollably. Antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity ADCC, cetuximab is an IgG1 subclass monoclonal antibody, which means it can activate the immune system to recognize cancer cells as foreign and attack them. Once cetuximab binds to EGFR on cancer cells, immune cells such as natural killer NK, cells can recognize the antibody-bound cancer cells and trigger ADCC. This immune-mediated response results in the destruction of cancer cells by the immune system. 
Complement dependent cytotoxicity, CDC. Additionally, cetuximab can activate the complement system, a part of the immune system that can directly lyse cancer cells. This process, known as complement dependent cytotoxicity, further contributes to the elimination of cancer cells. The combination of EGFR blockade, ADCC, and CDC mechanisms makes cetuximab an effective targeted therapy for certain types of cancer with EGFR overexpression. It is commonly used in the treatment of metastatic colorectal cancer and certain types of head and neck cancer. It's important to note that cetuximab is usually used in combination with other cancer treatments like chemotherapy or radiation therapy as part of a comprehensive treatment plan determined by the healthcare provider based on the individual patient's condition and the specific cancer type being treated. Side effects of cetuximab intravenous. Cetuximab, like all medications, can cause side effects in some patients. Some common side effects of cetuximab intravenous administration include skin reactions, infusion reactions as fever, chills, difficulty breathing, chest pain, or changes in blood pressure, fatigue, gastrointestinal effects, mouth sores, hypomagnesemia, which may lead to symptoms like muscle cramps, weakness, and irregular heartbeat. Cetuximab can weaken the immune system, increasing the risk of infections. Rarely, cetuximab may cause eye problems such as dryness, redness, or changes in vision. Some patients may experience cough, difficulty breathing, or lung problems. Important advices for using cetuximab intravenous. When using cetuximab intravenously, it's essential to follow certain important advice to ensure the safe and effective administration of the medication. Here are some key recommendations. Cetuximab should be administered by qualified healthcare professionals in a clinical setting, such as a hospital or infusion center. Some patients may be given premedications, such as antihistamines and corticosteroids, to reduce the risk of infusion reactions as per the healthcare provider's instructions. Cetuximab can cause skin rash and other skin-related side effects. Patients should use gentle cleansers, moisturizers, and sunscreen are also important to protect the skin. Patients should promptly report any side effects experienced during or after the cetuximab treatment. Cetuximab can weaken the immune system, increasing the risk of infections. Patients should seek medical attention if they develop signs of infection. Regular blood tests and medical checkups may be necessary to monitor the patient's response to cetuximab treatment and to detect any potential adverse effects on blood counts or organ function. Patients should inform their healthcare providers about all the medications, supplements, and herbal products they are taking as some medications may interact with cetuximab and affect its efficacy or increase the risk of side effects. Cetuximab may harm a developing fetus, so it is essential for patients to discuss pregnancy plans and contraceptive methods with their healthcare providers before starting treatment. Breastfeeding should also be avoided during cetuximab therapy. Patients should adhere to the prescribed treatment schedule and follow all instructions provided by their healthcare team. Remember that each patient's situation is unique, and the advice for using cetuximab may vary based on individual factors. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of the use, dosage, mechanism of action, side effects, and important advice for taking cetuximab intravenous. Remember, knowledge is power, and being well-informed empowers you to make the best decisions.